Hi, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And a couple of months ago, I recorded a session um, how you can manage your servers in a hybrid environment using Azure Arc. And so I was thinking, why not just share um, that video with all my subscribers on YouTube and actually show the give them access to that presentation. So in that presentation, I was talking about how you can leverage Azure Arc uh, to manage your servers and Kubernetes clusters and other high systems in a hybrid environment, running on premises or in a multi-cloud environment. Most of the session will be demos. So I will show you a lot of demos, how things actually work and how you can set up things and what you actually can do with it as, when, as soon as you connected um, your systems to Azure using Azure Arc. Um, and then I will also give you a quick intro with a couple of slides on why we have actually done this and why we actually think that hybrid management and hybrid cloud in general uh, is so important. So enjoy the video. Um, and when we started to look into, into this, we actually were looking at what is happening with our customer environments? Like what are the challenges our customers are facing? Uh, and one thing we realized is that with all this new technology, um, with all the things going on, uh, our the customer environment gets usually increasingly complex, right? And I'm sure you realize that. Um, and there are many, many reasons for that. And so we try to identify the, the main reasons uh, for that happening. And so we have, a, I will show you three reasons here. The first one being really that there are a lot of different apps. So if you're in, in the IT department, uh, if you're an IT administrator or, or a developer, you usually manage tens or hundreds or even thousands of different applications. And some of these applications are very modern applications written in modern languages like .NET Core. Uh, they're based on past services, so even serverless application or they're containerized. But then we also have a lot of these traditional applications, right? Which probably even more than we think, uh, which run in virtual machines and they run on phys even on physical machines. And again, but IT needs to take care of all of these, right? And manage all of these different types of applications. We also realized that a lot of our customers obviously have a very diverse infrastructure, right? They have their own data centers. They have uh, branch offices, retail stores, um, factories, other edge locations, then they also need to deal with different types of hardware. They have probably different uh, OEM uh, OEMs on board, um, different server types, different storage types, and so on. And then even when it comes to even more modern environments, they also need to manage these IoT devices, right? So again, uh, a big challenge for many, many IT departments out there to actually manage that. And then last but not least, we also see the concept of multi-cloud. And as you know, if you ever work with a cloud provider, one cloud provider can already be pretty complex because of the huge tool set it offers. Uh, but if you add multiples of these in your environment, then you can imagine that it gets even more complex in that sense. And again, many custom, uh, a lot of customers you can see, they run into these multi-cloud environments. Some of them, uh, the reason being that they already started with one of, of these cloud providers. Um, and then they decided, for example, for Microsoft Azure as their main cloud provider, which is, by the way, an excellent choice. Uh, but now the departments which already deployed at other cloud providers, they're probably not going to move all these applications just over to Azure. Um, no one wants to send that the budget for that and the time. Um, or in some cases, it's also just a decision, a strategic de decision to have multiple cloud providers. Uh, some customers like other ser services in different cloud providers better than, than others. Um, so there are a lot of reasons why customers are doing that. But again, that obviously also adds a lot of complexity. So you can see, even with these three points, we already add a lot of complexity, um, or we already see a lot of complexity in our customer environments. So how can we address this, right? It's not just about the cloud uh, moving everything to the cloud, but the cloud can also help us 
to make our on-premises environment even better. And so I took this picture back at Microsoft Ignite 2019. This is Jason Sanders. He is the engineering lead of all the Azure um, services, basically directly under Scott Guthrie. And he did the second keynote directly after Satya and he was talking a lot about hybrid. And I want to show you, uh, tell you basically one quote uh, he did. He basically said that we can see or we believe that hybrid is an end state for our customers and not just an in-between state until everything is moved to the cloud. And I think that is very important because we see that and so we are very serious about this uh, to help our customers uh, with their challenges, right? They can, in many cases, customers cannot just move everything to the cloud and everything is done. Uh, there are many reasons why customers also need to run services on premises or at the edge um, and we're addressing this. Reasons, for example, being uh, bad or no network connectivity at all or some applications cannot handle with the latency. And then we also see, obviously, data sovereignty uh, challenges, regulations, which, for example, forbid companies to store uh, sensitive data outside of their own country. And then there are also some internal, for example, uh, regulations or policies in place, which in some cases say, okay, you cannot store that without um, our four walls, right? And so customers have reasons why they want to want to be in a hybrid environment. And that makes absolutely fair sense. What we also see on this slide here is a short overview about um, our different offerings we have within Azure. Uh, and I will go into that deeper in just a bit to show you um, what we all have. But one thing I also want to mention is that we don't just have one solution for hybrid, right? Um, I often get asked, so we now have Azure Arc, does that now replace Azure Stack or whatever? Um, and I have to say, like these are completely different use cases, right? You can combine it. Some customers probably need both. Some customer just needs one of these solutions and not every customer has the same challenges. So we want to help addressing the different challenges our customers have with different uh, services out there. And so that is why we obviously have that whole toolkit and that whole set uh, in Azure. But also often gets forgotten is that we didn't just start hybrid with Azure Stack or um, Azure Arc. We had hybrid before, right? Uh, Azure had a lot of hybrid integration since it's built. It's basically designed to be hybrid. Um, and we can see that in many of our services. If you think about our management services we have, you could already, for example, use uh, Azure Update Management, Azure Automation. Um, when it comes to security and identity, we obviously have Azure AD, uh, Azure Security Center, Azure Sentinel. And also when you, when you think about data services and DevOps, we already have these hybrid services in place. We sometimes did not did a great job to tell our customers that they are there and you cannot just use them for Azure, but you can also use them to make your on-premises environment better. So this is all, all the things I, 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 we see and he, we obviously talk a lot about these, but let me quickly show you um, how our hybrid offering a little bit looks like. And again, there's a lot of things going on and we have a lot of offerings again to, to tackle all these different challenges we see. Um, let's start on the bottom right. Um, you can see here, Obviously, we have a whole set of our T Azure IoT uh, services available for our customers who want to manage their IoT devices, who want to get that data um, from their IoT devices and actually analyze them with the power of the cloud um, to get all that data uh, organized and analyze it using machine learning and AI to create their different models. Um, again, I could speak for hours <laughs> about just about IoT, uh, but obviously the focus of this presentation is more on, on, on other stuff. But uh, again, it's a very important part that we have a large offering there as well. Uh, we also then have in the middle Azure Stack, uh, our Azure Stack portfolio. Azure Stack is not just a single product anymore as in the beginning, it's now a um, set or a family or a portfolio of products with Azure Stack Edge, which allows you, which is a first party appliance to run, for example, AI and machine learning at the edge, but it's also a kind of like a storage gateway um, for your data to Azure. Then we have Azure Stack Hub, which was the original 
uh, Azure stack, which allows you to run, for example, a cloud consistent environment with Azure in a disconnected environment, for example. And then we also have the newly announced uh, Azure Stack HCI. Um, that is our hyper-converged virtualization platform, which allows you to run virtual machines, Linux and Windows machines for very small deployments in branch office or at the edge with like very small two node clusters, but then scale it up to large high performance uh, cluster environments for your own data centers. And with all that flexibility with different OEMs, different solutions uh, in there, and then connect that to the cloud, bringing additional services from Azure uh, on top of like Azure Stack HCI. And then also allow you, for example, to run AKS, our Azure Kubernetes service on top of Azure Stack HCI. And that brings me to the next thing. What we also see from customers a lot is they want to use our Azure services. However, as I mentioned before, there are reasons why they cannot use uh, Azure, um, the Azure cloud environment to run so, right? So we have, for example, one customer came to us and told us, look, we love Azure SQL. We, we run a lot of Azure SQL, obviously, with, with all the um, applications we can. But we also have, in some locations, the problem that we, we can just not leverage um, an Azure data center there because you don't like your data center is too far away, so the latency is too bad, or we're just not allowed to store data outside of that country. And so that is where they actually want to run Azure services within their data center on basically any infrastructure, right? So even if they have physical machines, if they have Hyper V clusters, if they have VMware clusters, they want to run that. Or they can even run these services on top of all the cloud providers, right? So if you like Azure SQL, but you run at another cloud provider, you can do that um, using one of part of Azure Arc. And the second part of Azure Arc is this line here in the middle, which is basically the single control plane our customers were asking for, right? Um, we have now with the cloud, we see customers using different tooling uh, for their on-premise environment, uh, for the cloud environment, um, for different cloud providers even. And so they want, they need some tooling which helps them actually to bring that all together uh, to get that single point of view to govern and manage, manage their resources. And I'm going to talk about mostly about this today. Uh, and I'm going to take X servers, Linux and Windows servers as an example. But this is not just there to manage Linux and Windows servers. It's also about Kubernetes clusters or data services as well. So when we speak about that single control plane, um, as I mentioned, this is really there to manage your environment running on premises in a multi cloud environment or even at the edge, right? And when I speak about management, we're talking about, for example, organizing and govern resources uh, at scale. Um, and again, we, we do that already in Azure, right? With Azure Resource Manager, uh, we are able to do that, to manage a lot of Azure resources uh, at scale. Um, and our customers told us like, why can we not just use that to actually for, for, for services which are running outside of Azure? And then also take that example of our developer cloud practices and bring these on-prem. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, how that looks like a little bit later. And then we can also uh, take advantage of all the security services we have in Azure, right? So we can take advantage, for example, Azure Security Center recommendations, not just for virtual machines running in Azure, but also for servers and Kubernetes clusters and SQL servers running outside of Azure, uh, which is a great benefit. So instead of talking about all of that on slides, let me show you a quick demo. So here I am in the Azure portal. I'm all on the all resources page, right? And you can see here all the Azure resources. And you can also realize that everything in Azure basically we create is a resource, right? From virtual machines to disk to even network adapters, network interfaces, security groups, root tables, public IP addresses, databases, web apps, even availability set. Everything is basically a resource or an object. And every resource is basically part of a resource group, uh, a location, and a subscription. And we can also then have, for example, tags to even organize our resources even a little, even more. Now, 
again, our customers came back and said, hey, this is great. This really helps us like, to manage uh, our and govern our resources right, uh, in Azure. But I want to use that for resources which live outside of Azure. So let me show you that really, really quickly. Uh, I'm going to filter here. And instead of just showing you um, the Azure, Azure resources, I'm just going to limit this view um, to servers with Azure Arc. I already joined a couple of servers which are running on premises in my own data centers, which is basically underneath my desk, um, or even at other cloud providers. And then I also want to see my Azure virtual machines. And now you can see here, I can see them side by side, right? Here you can see I have my Azure VMs, but then I can also have here my servers, uh, which I connected, which are running on premises using Azure Arc. And you can see here, they show up like an Azure resource. They also have a, diff a type. They also are part of a resource group. They're also part of an Azure location. They're part of a um, Azure subscription. And I can even use tags to actually organize that. So what I can do right now is, for example, I want to list all my servers from a specific cost center in my company. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use tags, which I already created. Um, and I have a tag here for cost center. So I'm going to select that tag and add that filter. And I want to see all my resources, which are in cost center 1001. Now with that, you can see here, now I can see both all the servers, which are now two for in that specific cost center. One is Azure machine. Uh, a Linux Azure machine. And the other one is a Linux server uh, running on premises. But I joined that here and I can see now all the resources in that uh, cost center in a single place, right? This is already great. I mean, how many times um, you have talked, for example, I have talked to customers, asked them for a list of all their servers. And they told me, yeah, well, we can create one, but it takes us like two, three days or even longer. Um, now you get basically that single pane of glass uh, where you can actually see all, all your resources. And again, this is not just limited to servers. Uh, this is also available, for example, for your Kubernetes clusters as well. Now you say, Thomas, okay, this is great. I mean, I get that view. I get now that I can see and organize that a little bit, but I hope there is more. And of course there's more. So let me go to Azure policy. Um, and now, for those who don't know what Azure policy is, Azure policy allows us basically to configure the Azure environment, right? So the, the cloud offers a lot of speed and flexibility. So you can just go and create a virtual machine in a couple uh, of seconds, right? And deploy that. Um, and that is great for our IT pros and developers and you want to give them access to that. However, you want to keep a little bit of control, right? You don't want every uh, developer IT pro going out and deploying one of our large MV2 series virtual machines with a couple of hundred uh, cores and I think up to over 12 ter terabytes of memory and they drain your credit card in like three seconds. You want to keep that control of your Azure environment. You also probably want to limit like things for naming conventions or in which Azure regions uh, things can be deployed. So that is where Azure policy can come in. Now, what a lot of people don't know is there's also something called Azure guest configuration policy. And this is really for our virtual machines uh, running in Azure. And this allows us to set certain policies and audit our virtual machines in Azure. So I'm quickly going to show you how that looks like. So I'm going to do a new assignment of a policy. And I will not just assign a policy, I will assign an initiative here, which initiative is just a set of multiple policies. And what I can do here, I can select the scope, uh, I can select a management group, a um, subscription a resource group, and even down to a resource. Uh, in this case, I just selected my, my subscription. And then I'm going to select the, an available um, policy or initiative here. So we give you a couple of built in um, definitions and policies already, right? So you can see here, we have a couple of them in here. A lot of them are focused um, on industry certifications, for example. So if you were dealing with IRS certifications, um, 
we also have obviously for UK official, UK NHS, uh, Swift, uh, PCI, for example, uh, a lot of stuff for um, uh, government uh, users in different cases where you have these things, uh, ISO, uh, and a lot of things of that. And that obviously is then a set of policies to actually go out and figure out is my environment configured correctly, right? But what we also have here is simple ones, or very technical ones. For example, one I want to show you is this one here, which actually goes out and audits my servers, um, the operating system for insecure password settings, right? So it has a look, we have a set of rules here, which it goes and checks and sees if everything is configured correctly. And then it will audit my machines um, and tell me which are not compliant. So like in a good cooking show, I already prepared this because it will take some time until I deployed it. It will go out and audit all these systems. Um, but to show you that immediately, I'll just go back to policy and I can actually go into compliance view. Now in compliance view, I get an overview about uh, how I am actually doing. And you can see here, I'm not doing so great. <laughs> I still have a lot of potential uh, to be more compliant in my environment. Uh, you can see here on the bottom um, the policies which are assigned, which I'm not compliant to. Um, you can see here a lot of red. And then at one point you will also find hopefully some which uh, policies I am compliant with. Um, so, but I'm actually caring about one which I'm actually just showed you. Uh, let's go with this one here, which again is the one I just showed you to audit my VMs for insecure password settings. So if you click on that, I obviously can figure out again that I'm not compliant with this. Uh, I can also see what is actually going on. If I scroll down, you can see here all the policies which are in this initiative. So all the different rules here to, to check. Um, you can see here some of them I am compliant, some of them I'm not. But more interestingly, I can actually go out and see which resources are not compliant. And if I go in here now, what I can see here is I can see my Azure VMs, which are not compliant. You can see here the resource type, Microsoft Compute Virtual Machine. Um, but you can also see on the top here that it also goes out and checks my servers I joined using Azure Arc, my Microsoft.Hybrid Compute Machines. So I can leverage the Azure Guest Configuration Policies for my uh, servers running on premises or even at other cloud providers, right? So that's a great, great thing here. So many of you now ask Thomas, okay, um, how are we going to do that? Like how, what did you just show me? So what I want to show you here is a very high level architecture of Azure management uh, of the single control plane we are using here. And no worries, we will go through this. So let's start on the left side. So we as Azure customers, we are basically using tools um, like the portal, like PowerShell, the CLI APIs, the SDKs, um, third party tools uh, to actually interact with Azure. And when we do that, we do that, we interact with Azure Resource Manager. That is actually the magic behind all the things I just showed you, like uh, the role-based access control. So I can only access the resources I should have access to. Um, about logs, subscription management, policies, blueprints, indexing, grouping, tagging, search, and even like deployment stuff, right? On top of that, we also have additional uh, management services for containers, like monitoring, update management, backup and security. And until we announced Azure Arc, a lot of these services were basically, um, and, and Azure Resource Manager were basically available for Azure services, right? So we could actually manage Azure VMs, we could manage web apps, uh, service fabric, Kubernetes clusters, and others of our over 200 different services we have in Azure. Now, what we are doing with Azure Arc, we are, we are basically extending Azure Resource Manager to allow us to connect resources which are outside of Azure. For example, servers, Kubernetes clusters, or database, data services, and so on, right? Um, so these are just a couple of resources we just named, which are currently uh, general available or in public preview, right? So 
this then allows us to take advantage of Azure Resource Manager and many of the of the management services we have in Azure. And then we can still use our local tools, right? We don't want to create that dependency to Azure, which then says, okay, if you don't have internet connectivity or connectivity to Azure anymore, um, everything fails. No, no, that is not what, what it is about, right? It should give you that additional management space, but you can still leverage your local server admin tools you're using, your uh, native Kubernetes tools or Azure Data Studio to do complete local management of these resources. And so that is that is one part um, uh, we can do. Now, I showed you how you can actually um, manage now a little bit of your servers, how they show up in Azure Resource Manager, how they show up in the portal. Uh, but let's have a look how actually the onboarding experience works and what more I can do uh, with Azure Arc. So here I am back in the Azure portal. And if I want to onboard machines or Kubernetes clusters or use anything on Azure Arc uh, also to manage, I can also go and search here, for example, for Azure Arc. And this will then show me um, the Azure Arc uh, service here. And if I go to that, I get into the Azure Arc Center. So this is where I get all of the management for Azure Arc resources, right? You get here some additional overview, you get some like infrastructure overview, you can see here, I can join different like server systems, Kubernetes clusters, SQL servers, uh, and so on. You can also see that I can work with different data services here, for example, to create SQL managed instances, which are running outside of Azure, or Postgres hyperscale, uh, which runs outside of Azure. Um, you can also find additional information here. Um, you can see here that I can manage my uh, servers, my Kubernetes clusters, my SQL servers, and also Azure Stack HCI. Azure Stack HCI has Azure Arc built in. So when you deploy it and you register it with Azure, Azure Arc connects up to, to these resources. Now for all the others, like servers and Kubernetes clusters and SQL servers and so on, we actually have an agent which we need to deploy on that server or on that cluster, which then connects up to Azure. Right, and I will show you a bit how that how that looks like. If you want to know, by the way, about pricing, we also have here a direct link to pricing, and actually we'll talk about about that a little bit later. Uh, but you will be surprised how how that looks like. Um, so, if we, for example, want to manage servers, uh, we could do that again in the all resources plate. They show up, or we can just click here on servers, and then all the servers are already joined. They show up here. You can see some of them are connected and working. Some of them are offline and some of them are expired because probably like I removed them uh, or have to check what's going on with that server. But you can see here again, they look like Azure resources. Now, how do I join a server in this? So what I can do here is I can click on the add button here. And again, as I said, we actually need to deploy an agent. Now you can obviously go out and read the documentation, download the agent and run everything by yourself. However, we wanted to make it simple for you. So we give you these two wizards basically, or these two options directly within the portal. One of them is actually creating an interactive script, which you can then copy or download and run on the specific machine. This will then download the agent, install the agent, and then register it with the, with your Azure uh, tenant. Now, with the interactive script, you actually need to log in with your Azure credentials while you run the script. So you definitely don't want to do that if you want to onboard a lot of different systems. So we also have an option where you can actually use a service principal name to actually onboard Azure Arc services. So there's a minimum permission, which only allows you to add service to Azure and it does not have any or more permissions as well. So you can then easily run that script to onboard hundreds, if not thousands of servers in just a couple of minutes. Now, for this demo, we're going to have a look how we generate that script uh, in the interactive version. So if we start that wizard, this will help us a little bit figuring out what we need. And you can see here, we have some requirements here. It actually needs port 443 outgoing traffic to some Azure endpoints, right? Um, often people say it needs internet access. Uh, it, I, it's basically limited internet access because it only needs to obviously connect with some 
Azure endpoints here, and you can find that in the documentation. So if you're in an enterprise environment, you can easily use that. You also need obviously local administrator permissions to install the specific agent. And then in Azure, the only thing which we already need is a re existing resource group to join these servers. So in the next step, we're actually going to configure that, the, the, define the script. So what we're going to choose is we're going to choose the subscription we want to join that server to. Uh, we're going to select the resource group uh, where we want to join that server to. So I already created one here for our Azure Arc um, servers. Um, and then we also join it to a Azure region. Now, this is only where like basically the, the closest region where the Azure where the Azure Arc agent or the Azure connected machine agent connects to, right? So you can see here, not all regions show up. However, no data gets transferred except for metadata, uh, which actually is like server names and, and data and stuff like that where um, uh, for the management part. So in my case, my server is closest to West Europe. Uh, and then I'm going to select, okay, is this a Windows or Linux server I'm going to join? Uh, in my case, this is now a Windows server. Obviously, uh, we would then get a PowerShell script to run that machine. If we would choose Linux, we would get a shell script to run, uh, run on, on the Linux server. We can also configure a proxy server. And then we can already add some of the tags I just showed you. Like I showed you the cost center tag I created, but we can obviously add already a couple of other things like physical locations, like data center tag, city um, or country and, and so on, which help you to make it easier to manage your resources. Now, in my case, um, I, I also don't want to add custom tags right now. So I can just leave this open and I can go out and add res like tags later on to all my machines if I want that. On the next side, I get then finally the script. So in this script, um, I get some information. I can just copy paste that or I can download it. And what it actually does, again, you can see here there are three commands. So the first one goes out and downloads the agent installer, which in the, in the Windows world is a MSI file. It installs that MSI package, so it installs the agent, and then it runs a command, which then basically registers um, my server to the specific Azure tenant, subscription, resource group, and gives all the additional information I just provided. So this is something I did, and then I basically, the server shows up after a couple of minutes, shows up here. If you're running Windows Admin Center, you also have the option in the settings um, in Windows Admin Center to actually do the exact same things without connecting to the Azure environment. You just go in, Windows Admin Center gives you um, the, the the wizard and you can actually run that run through this. Now, what can we do now with these server as soon as they're joined? So let's have a look at this server here. Uh, the first thing we can realize when we go to that server, it looks like an Azure resource, right? Um, if we look at the menu here, you can see here we have an overview, we have the activity log, we have role-based access control. So again, you can basically use Azure to do the role-based access control. So if you have, for example, SharePoint servers uh, or other application servers, you can make sure that only the SharePoint team can see these servers or the SharePoint team only can see these servers, right? Um, you can use tags as I showed you before. You can also see here, all the information that it's joined to a resource group, uh, to a subscription. And on the right side, you also get some additional uh, information. So you get, for example, the computer name. You can also see that this is actually a domain joint server to a local domain here. You get the info operating system information and so on. Now, furthermore, we get obviously a couple of settings here. So the first thing I want to show you here is extensions. So if you have worked with Azure VMs before, you know that we have uh, something called VM extensions and you can actually deploy these. And so we also can deploy these on um, Azure Arc enabled servers. So in this automatically detects that this is a Windows machine. So it only shows me the Windows extensions here. So we have a custom script extensions, which allows you to run a custom script against that server. Um, you can run PowerShell desired state configuration against it, or you can directly use that to install the uh, log analytics agent or the Azure monitoring agent, which then provides you with some additional uh, management capabilities. Now, in this case, I, sorry, I already have done that. So I already onboarded that to um, the Azure log analytics part. Uh, so this also then allows me, for example, to use the security recommendations. So you can see here, 
I have a couple of security re um, recommendations for that specific system that are coming directly out of Azure Security Center. And so I get here some information that, for example, I should probably install the updates on my machine. And it also gives me here, like, what is it, high, medium, or low. Now, importantly, uh, I showed you this. You can do that out of the portal, but obviously you can also re reuse ARM templates as Azure Resource Manager templates or, or CLI or PowerShell commands to actually run that. Now, with that, you get some additional management capabilities. So the first thing I want to show you is obviously that machine is now connected to Log Analytics. So I can actually access the logs which were sent to Azure. And you probably say, Thomas, this is something we saw before, right? Um, uh, we could do that before. We could install the Log Analytics agent manually and, and have all that. And yes, absolutely. But what you didn't have before is the role-based access control for that. Now, so in the past, what you need to do is give everyone access to the Log Analytics workspace. And so you saw all the logs from all the different servers, right? But now with Azure Arc, you actually can select the scope here or you have to find the scope to only run that against this server. So like a SharePoint admin, he can only run log queries against this. So here in the middle, we can run log queries. Those are basically the same we did with Azure Log Analytics. It's using the keyword query language, or many of you also know it as Custo. So you can here run then our queries. So I have a very simple one here, which actually just gives me the update summary here, um, information uh, where I can see here, for example, how many updates are available, what updates are available and so on. Uh, I can obviously also extend that. So you can see here I have many other logs here. I have performance logs available, security logs, um, I get system logs, whatever I actually enable, I can, I can find here. Now with that, I can also start using Azure monitoring. And with Azure monitoring, the first thing I wanna show you here is for example, the performance monitoring part. So I can see how much disk space is used. I can see how the CPU utilization is, the memory utilization. You can see that this server doesn't really do much. Um, and then you can also see how the IOPS on these systems are going, how the disk throughput is, uh, disk latency. You also get some more information about, for example, um, network bandwidth and network throughput. Uh, with data received and data sent and so on. And you get a lot of more information as well. Uh, but something I find really cool is the map view. So I get a dependency map. So let me show you that in a bit. I zoom out here a little bit first so you can see how the concept is. So I have my server here and I can see to which different endpoint that is connecting. So if I zoom back in here, you can see here one of the endpoints on port. You can see that one of the ports here my server is connecting to is 443 and it connects to 10 different endpoints. So I want to see the endpoints this server is connecting to. And you can see here all the different endpoints that server is, is, is connecting to. You can also see that we have here, that is the Azure Arc agent actually connecting to the Azure Arc endpoint. Now I can also, I mean, I'm not just seeing that for outgoing in, like internet traffic. I can also see that if I go, for example, here, I can see port 135 and you can see here that this then goes to the local domain controller. So I know that this server somehow communicates with that specific server within my network. So very quick, very big benefit, uh, really quickly done. Now, there is obviously more. Uh, I want to show you quickly policies. So I showed you policies before in terms of a policy administrator. Uh, I was able to like see all the policies in my environment and see all the resources which are not compliant or which are compliant. Now, in this case, I only see the policies assigned to that specific server. So if I'm the server admin, I can now see, okay, which policies I'm compliant with and which I'm not. And then, for example, have a look at how that looks like. So in my case, I also have uh, a policy here which checks if my server is in the right time zone and you can see here that I'm not compliant. So this server does not necessarily be in the right time zone. So I could now go out and, and change that to be actually compliant with that. I also have the create remediation task here. So I can also do for some policies, I can actually go out and create that task and it will fix it for me. We also have then different tools. Um, using, for example, inventory. So we get a software inventory of that specific server. Also very handy. So if we wanna have a look, if something is installed on that machine, we can see here that this server has Edge installed. 
Um, this also obviously works with Windows services, uh, Windows registry and files and so on, uh, if I configure that. And then I can also have a look at change tracking to figure out what changes on that server. Now I can see what changes, when are the changes happening. So I can see if there are a lot of changes happening, I can see that. And then I can see what, what is actually happening. So here, for example, we have some changes on services, probably some services which just are restarted to do some checks. Uh, for example, sometimes updates, checks and so on and so on. But then here, for example, we have some additional software installed, which is actually a security update for Microsoft Defender antivirus. So this shows up here uh, as well. So this is very handy if you want to see what's going on. Um, we also can have update management. Now, this is one of the great tools we have. We all know the challenges with updating machines. Uh, we have usually multiple tools because we have Linux and Windows servers. We have running them on premises and in the cloud and different cloud providers. Uh, so we end up with a big bunch of different tools. And so this is where update Azure Update Management can come in. It can actually manage updates for Windows and Linux servers running on premises in Azure or even at other cloud providers. Um, and that gave you that single control plane. So what I can see here first, I can see here the updates, the missing updates on that specific server. So you can see here that I have uh, security updates missing, which I should probably fix. That's why I'm not compliant. So what I can do here now is I can schedule a new update deployment. So I can give that a name. This is now just for this single server. Uh, however, um, I, I will show you in a bit how you can also do that for a group of servers in just a bit. Uh, it automatically has detected that this is a Windows server. I can define the length of the maintenance window and then I can say, okay, should I reboot the server? Um, I can say, okay, um, only reboot. So if I just want to reboot the server, that's also a good trick to do. Uh, I can always reboot, uh, never reboot or reboot if the updates like I installed require a reboot. So that is usually a good option. Um, and then I can go out and schedule it. Now I can say update now, which would happen in like the next five to 10 minutes. Um, but since I'm in the middle of a demo here, it's probably not the right thing to do. Um, so uh, also for many of you who actually run a business critical environment, um, you probably don't want to do that during business hours. So what you can do is you can actually go out and schedule it uh, to a specific time, like out of the business hours, for example. And then to make it even more manageable, you can even create a recurring update deployment. So you can say, hey, uh, every week on Tuesday night, I want, for example, to install updates for that specific server. So I can do that. I can then go forward and then go a little bit more and come into configuration. So I can select the specific classifications of updates I want to install. So if I, for example, only want to install security updates, I can do that as well. I can include and exclude updates. I can even run a script pre and a post script if I need to. And at the end, I can review that and actually create that update deployment. Now, again, Pretty great to actually update the server, but now the many of us, if you will ask me, Thomas, yeah, but I have hundreds or, or even more of servers to manage. I don't want to do that like for every single server. And you're absolutely right. Since update management and all these management services are not something new with Azure Arc, they're already existing for a while. Um, they're part of Azure automation and um, log analytics. So we can just simply go to manage multiple machines here. And this will automatically take me here to my Azure automation account. And you can see here that also change tracking and inventory are part of this. And what you can now see here is you can see here all my servers, which are joined to that specific update management solution. And you can see here, this can be Windows and Linux servers. These can be also non Azure machines and Azure machines. And what I can do here now is I could go out and schedule an update deployment. And here I could select or create a group of servers I want to update. So I can also do very smart things like I can take advantage of tags in Azure. I can tell what we have done with other customers before is we created a tag called update group. And then you had, for example, two update groups, one update group, the update group one was uh, running the updates on Tuesday night. And uh, update group two was running the updates on Thursday night. So if you had two controllers, you actually put them in two different use two different tags. So one domain controller would update 
on Tuesday nights and the second domain controller would update uh, on Thursday night. And then that would basically create dynamic groups. So you don't need to change the groups all the time. You can just change the tags on the servers. So that is pretty cool um, feature of Azure Arc and Azure management. And I hope I could give you a little bit of an overview of the single control plane here. I also want to quickly go back to the Azure Arc environment. Go back, so we also have other services here um, like Kubernetes clusters. So I can show you here, not just servers, but also my Kubernetes clusters. If I go and have a look at one of these clusters, I can see here, again, it looks like an Azure resource. It looks like uh, a Kubernetes cluster I could run in Azure. So I also get some alerting logs and monitoring. So if I have a look at monitoring, you can actually see uh, what my uh, Kubernetes cluster running outside of Azure is doing. So you can see here the node CPU utilization, the node memory utilization, uh, the node count in general, and, and so on. I can even go deeper into the nodes, for example, and see what's happening there. I can go deeper, drill into this to actually find the different information here as well. I can even go down and look, have a look at all the containers running on that Kubernetes cluster. So let me open that up a little bit. So you can see here, I'm going in, I can find the different information for these clusters. Uh, and apologize for the view, uh, just when I, since I'm making everything a little bit bigger, um, so people can actually see what's going on. Um, you can get a better overview on, on your own desk then. But you can see here then all the containers and how they're doing and how they're running and how long their uptime is and so on. So let's switch back to the slides. And I want to show you some of the key takeaways of Azure Arc enabled servers I just showed you. Uh, to summarize this a little bit, it enables you to provide you with inventory. So you can actually add Windows and Linux servers, uh, physical and virtual machines uh, running in your private data center at the edge or at other cloud providers. Uh, and it's completely domain agnostic. Uh, we can then take advantage of governance and security tools from Azure. So you can, we can take advantage of, for example, Azure policy, Azure guest configuration policy. We can take advantage of Azure Security Center for the security baselines and so on to see actually are our resources uh, configured compliant and securely. We can also access that using role-based access or take advantage of role-based access control. Um, so you obviously get that view, like with your centralized IT, you get that great overview about all your systems, but you can also enable different application groups and application admins to have access to these servers and workloads. Um, you can also take advantage if you're a managed service provider and you're working with Azure Lighthouse to manage different customers and customer environments and different customer tenants. Um, Azure Arc also works with that. So you can also leverage um, that as well. And then obviously the first things I showed you is like you get that searchable inventory, uh, you get that management, consistent management experience, for example, through the portal, but also to, through other tools. And then you can organize uh, your resources, for example, using tags and they take advantage of that uh, as well. Now, I only showed you a little bit of Azure Arc. There's much, much more uh, we could talk about. And I just want to highlight a couple of these things um, when, and make a step back to actually what Azure Arc can do as well. So I was showing you the uh, organizing and govern uh, part uh, in your environment, especially on the server side. But however, that also works obviously with Kubernetes clusters. So you can also make sure that your Kubernetes clusters are configured securely uh, using Azure policy, for example, are the, like check the compliance states of these Kubernetes clusters at scale uh, as well, not just for your servers. And then we can also enable something for app management uh, for your Kubernetes clusters as well. So we can configure something with a concept called GitOps, where we actually check in the application code and the application configuration of your containerized application into a Git repository and then the Kubernetes clusters running on-prem uh, or at another cloud provider, they can automatically get that information and check that Git repository for any changes and then actually do these changes through the applications um, uh, or running on that Kubernetes cluster. So a very powerful way uh, if you need to manage, for example, multiple Kubernetes clusters with different applications, you can configure that very, very easily and use these DevOps techniques for that. 
And then I spoke about that as well. Um, Azure Arc also enables you to run Azure data services anywhere. So you, you can actually go out and deploy um, Azure um, SQL managed instances, for example, in your own data center using Azure Arc. Uh, and again, there's much, much more to that um, as well. Uh, what I also want to quickly say is at the moment we have Azure Arc enabled servers, which is uh, generally available. So you get full support for that. Uh, Kubernetes and data services are currently in preview. Um, so you're just going to check it out and but don't use it in production, but you can actually go out and test it. And the good thing about these two things right now, because they're in preview, they're actually free of charge. Now for the server part, um, joining servers to Azure Arc is actually free. So you get some base services, which are free, and then you have some extended services. So as soon as you, for example, start using Azure Security Center, Lock Analytics and all this stuff, or Azure Policy, then you pay for these specific additional services. But if you want to try it out and just see, like get the inventory, get the power of that single control plane, um, you can actually go out and try that out now. And again, there's good documentation on how the pricing uh, actually works, uh, but don't expect any crazy pricing um, on, that, on, on that side. I know that we have a very technical audience, so I also want to quickly give you a overview about the Azure Arc architecture in general. And it's kind of like similar on what you showed before, but uh, again, we start on the left side. So if you manage Azure resources, we are actually using tools like the portal, the CLI, PowerShell, the SDKs and so on. Uh, and then we interact with Azure Resource Manager, which provides us with all these management technologies. Now in blue, you can see everything specific to Azure Arc. And usually what we have is we have resource providers which are plugged into Azure Resource Manager. Uh, for a, basically every server has at least re, one resource provider. And then you can see here, for example, at the bottom, the Azure Arc uh, server resource provider connects to the, um, or the Azure, <laughs> Azure Arc uh, agent, connects to the Azure Arc resource provider. Um, for the server side, the same thing happens on Kubernetes clusters. And then for um, the data services part, the same thing. But what you also can see here is that the requirements to run Azure data services like Azure SQL or Postgres, um, what you need is a Kubernetes cluster, right? So all you need to deploy Azure SQL is actually a Kubernetes cluster. And again, for all of these services, you can still use your uh, own local tools, for example, you're using for server administration, Kubernetes administration, and so on. So I want to do another step back and actually um, mention that, again, Azure Arc is just one of our hybrid offerings. Um, it is basically the piece which extends Azure Resource Manager and allows you to connect up these services. But again, we have also a lot of other stuff like the whole Azure IoT uh, offering and then our Azure Stack portfolio with Azure Stack Hub, Azure Stack Edge and Azure Stack HCI. And then obviously bring that together with management, security, identity and many others. And a lot of customers now asking, okay, when do I use what? It obviously really depends on what your what your needs are, right? So depending, some customers, they probably need Azure Stack, some customers need IoT, some of them need Azure Arc, or you need to, you need even like two and combine them or all of them, uh, really depending on what you have. So for example, you could actually go out and deploy an Azure Stack Hub environment, put uh, the Azure Kubernetes engine on top of that, so you have a Kubernetes cluster, which you then can connect up uh, to Azure for the management part using Azure Arc. So there's a many, many things you can connect here. And again, we don't just have one solution which fits every customer or should fit every customer. We really try to go out and, and help the customers with their specific uh, needs. So with that, I wanna say thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out. Uh, thank you again.